Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, we're going to finish up making our, our web page with form so that a customer can choose options for a particular product. Our product is a stick figure. And in the last video, we got the shirts part working, so we can click through and change different shirts. It'll change an image for which shirt the character is wearing. It's also updating the price over here on the far right. So shirt one is 100 bucks, shirt two is 150, shirt three is 180. The base price plus the uh, options price, in this case just shirts, adds to the total price. So now that we've got the shirts working, it's going to be really easy to take care of the rest. So let me jump back over to my editor. And I've got a function in here. Let me just go ahead and zoom out so I can get a kind of a bigger picture. Okay, I know I zoomed out a lot there, but Basically, I've got this function which is going to check to see and find out which shirt the customer has chosen for their character. Okay, so that's one complete function. So I'm going to get that selected. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste. So I've just duplicated it, but I got to fix the second one up. So let me zoom back in. This is going to be my check pants function. Now my check pants function is pretty similar of course but instead of checking for shirts I'm checking for pants. So there's the start of my check pants function. Instead of looking for shirt zero I'm gonna be looking for pants zero and instead of on image shirt it's gonna be image pants. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those changes. There we go. So I've made the I've made the updates. So now after my checking shirts function, I've got another function called check pants, and it does pretty much the same thing. There's a there's about four if statements. If the person has chosen the element ID pants zero, that's the no pants option. Well, then the source of the uh, of the image file is going to be nothing, and there's nothing, and there's no option price to that one. If they choose pants one, pants two, or pants three, the appropriate image is displayed, and the appropriate price for that option is appended to the options priced running variable. Okay, so I've got those three options. There's the end of my checking pants function, and then I have to call that function. So there's my check shirt function. Here's my check pants function. Okay. So remember, I'm creating variables, I'm sorry, I'm creating functions within a function. My main function is update total. Within that function, I have two other functions. So just creating a function, by the way, doesn't trigger it. Okay, creating a function kind of stores this procedure, and then we have to call it. And now I'm calling that function. So this should take care of the shirts and the pants. I'm going to save, jump back over to my browser, hit refresh. Okay, so I've got my shirt options, and now I've got some pants options for my character. Notice if I choose a $100 shirt and a $210 pair of pants, my options total is $310. Added to the base price, total product, $810. No pants, saves you a little money, $500, $100. No shirt and only pants. Oh, look at this. We'll have to point this out on what's going on here. So basically, if I have a shirt image, then that pushes everything down, and my pants image shows up in the right spot. Okay, But if I don't have a shirt and I only have pants, the pants image is trying to go as high as it can in that div. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. So this is actually going to be over on the HTML side, well, the CSS side of things, actually. Don't forget. I've got this div called images and there are two images in there, one for image shirt, one for image pants. So let me go up to my CSS and if you recall when I created the div for that images I did position relative and I did that for a reason. It's because I want to position absolutely the location of my shirts and pants images. Both of those elements are uniquely identified, image shirts, image pants because that's going to allow me to simply say, all right, div images image shirt, okay? So I've got this image called image shirt, and it's in my div images area. Yeah, technically this isn't even really needed, so I'll just take that out. And let's see, this is going to be a position absolute. I'm going to do uh, two pixels from the left and two pixels from the top. There we go. And let's see, I'm just going to take this whole thing, copy it, paste, and I'm going to have image pants. It's also going to be absolute. 
but it's going to be it's going to be two pixels from the left. But for top, I'm going to do 268. And you just have to trust me on that because the height of the image I used for my shirt is 268 pixels tall. So that's where I want the pants to show up. And the effect will be much better. So let me just head back over to my browser, refresh, and I'll no shirt. Let me choose some pants. There we go. So the pants are, you know, showing up roughly where they need to even if I don't have a shirt involved. Um, you could spend a little bit more time kind of picking the proper location here, but I've just kind of got them roughly where they kind of work. Okay, so now my pants images and my shirts images are showing up where they should be, even if nothing is selected. So now I'm just gonna take care of the shipping and then we're all set. So let me jump back over to my editor. There we go. And let's see, we need to go back to our script section. And things are going well. We have a function for checking shirts. We have a function for checking pants. Well, let's make a function for checking the shipping. Okay, so I'm going to call it function, and I'll probably just end up using check shipping. Why not? Keep with that same syntax I've been using so far. So check shipping, and I'll finish it down here. End of check shipping function. Okay. Now within this, it's going to be a little bit simpler looking because I don't have to change any images for the shipping. So my function for checking shipping, it's three if statements. I'm looking at the element that has ID shipping. And in case you don't recall, I have a selection menu here. Okay, where did my selection menu go? There it is right there. There's my selection menu and it has ID shipping. And then my options all have unique values. They're standard, three, and overnight. So if, my sh if the value of my element shipping is standard, they must have chosen standard shipping. And that costs 10 bucks. If the value of my shipping is three, they must have chosen three-day shipping. And that's a $30 item. And my overnight shipping is 60 bucks. There we go. And I do, of course, need to call this function. So check shipping is going to get called. I've already got these variables in their display set up. So let's save that. Head over to the browser. Refresh. OK. Base price is 500 bucks. Choose shirt one. Oh, my pants one was already selected. So basically, let me do a hard refresh. See it from the very beginning here. OK. No options are chosen. Base price is $500. Um, no shirt, no options. Shipping, $10. Let me choose three-day shipping, 30 bucks. Choose overnight shipping, $60. Let's choose shirt style two, which is $150. So now my total's up to 710. So I've got shirt two. How about if I choose pants one? So we've got our base price of 500. We've got 150 and 210. That's 360 dollars worth of options. I'm going to choose overnight shipping, which is 60 bucks. There we go. So 360 and 60 is 420 plus 500, 920 dollars. So everything's working out great. So clearly a very very simple way to handle this. And if you've done JavaScript before, there's probably more efficient ways to write out all these if statements. We could do, uh, certainly, we could do some shorthand for if statements that would make our lives a little bit easier. Um, but this is the basic structure that we'll stick with for now. So just as a quick recap, I've got this web page and it's got a form on it. And the form is made up of a bunch of radio buttons. Whenever somebody chooses a radio button or chooses a different radio button, it's going to call a function. My function is called update total. Now my update total function is contained up in the head section, but basically my update total function sets a few initial variables. Then it contains some nested functions. I'm checking to see which shirt a person checked. Based on the shirt, an image is changed and the options price variable, which was created earlier, is appended or updated. There's a function for checking pants. There's a function for checking the shipping. Each of those functions is in called in turn. Another variable is set. And the display of the totals of the various options and total price and shipping, those are displayed in the appropriate HTML element specified by ID. So that's the end of that function.